Richard Branson, most known for founding the Virgin Group, which you probably think is just the Virgin Megastore. While I won't delve into the more than 400 companies he controls, I do want to get into how he's planning to initiate space tourism with Virgin Galactic. Let's go. You might have heard about so many space flights recently, especially the past couple of years. Companies like SpaceX by Elon Musk, Blue Origin by Jeff Bezos, and Boeing have been heavily invested in space. Just think about what tourism used to mean to us. It started with exploring different regions around where you lived by land, into air flight, visiting different countries around the world, and now space. If you enjoy my videos, please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. It'll help us grow. So what is Virgin Galactic? Virgin Galactic is an American spaceflight company within the Virgin Group, as we've mentioned before. It is invested in providing high-end consumers with a lot of money to spare, the space tourism we've always dreamt about. The space flights they aim at achieving are suborbital, meaning what we launch won't gain enough speed to be able to orbit around the Earth. It will fly up to a certain height and come back down once the engines are shut down. While the founder originally planned on launching their first aircraft by the end of 2009, the target date got postponed several times due to flight failures, explosions and fatalities along the way, which unfortunately is part of the process of developing such demanding technologies there's always a risk factor involved in these kinds of things. During one of the crashes in their testing in 2014 of the VSS Enterprise vehicle, where the co-pilot was killed in the explosion, I found the BBC's David Shuckman comment really important. It goes like this. Even as details emerge of what went wrong, this is clearly a massive setback to a company hoping to pioneer a new industry of space tourism. Confidence is everything, and this will not encourage the long list of celebrity and millionaire customers waiting for their first flight. Following the crash, the newer spacecraft was renamed to VSS Unity in 2016 by Stephen Hawking, one of the world's renowned theoretical physicists in history. Stephen Hawking dreamed of having his own spaceflight experience on the Unity vehicle, but unfortunately died in 2018 before he could achieve his dream. Fun fact. The eye in the logo, and on the side of the vehicle, is Stephen Hawking's eye. The decision was made because of Richard Branson's admiration of Hawking. He wanted him to be part of this project, forever. Test flights of the replacement spaceship, VSS Unity, then began. It completed its first flight, a successful glide test, in December 2016, and by December 2018, Unity reached a height of 82.7 kilometers above the Earth and officially entered outer space, according to the US standards. In February 2019, the project carried three people, including a passenger, on VSS Unity, with a member of the team floating within the cabin during spaceflight that reached around 90 kilometers. Finally, and most recently, in December of 2020, their latest spaceflight test was cut short after the engine of its Unity vehicle did not fully ignite as it attempted to launch above New Mexico. It's not looking good for them as more pressure from investors and 600 customers who have already paid between $200,000 and $250,000 for their tickets several years ago. Yes, it's not cheap. Thankfully, the crew is safe and they manually landed Unity after the abort. The company plans to reopen ticket sales fully in 2021 after Branson's flight. Yes, he's planning on going on one of these trips soon although we don't know how much these tickets will cost once sales reopen. Apparently, they're high in demand and might be more expensive, so we'll see. Their approach to spaceflight is quite different. To start, there are two main vehicles involved in the launch. There's Spaceship 2, also known as VSS Unity, which has been used since 2016, 
the one we just mentioned. It's the one that flies to space eventually. And there is White Knight 2, the mothership, also known as VMS Eve, which has been used since 2008. It's the one that carries Unity up to a certain altitude and then releases. Unity then starts gaining altitude as it goes higher and higher, eventually reaching space. To re-enter the atmosphere, it folds its wings up and returns them to their original position for an unpowered descent flight back onto the runway. This design and way of flight was intentionally chosen for a main purpose, reusability, trying to always use the same aircrafts over and over and over. That, along with further spaceports planned in Abu Dhabi and elsewhere, will eventually consumerize this project in the future. But how does this design work, really? You'll be surprised to know that it is inspired by the shuttlecock, aka the thing you hit while playing badminton sport. I'm not lying. The idea of it is simple, though implementation was pretty challenging. When you hit the shuttlecock, it gains enough momentum to go in a specific direction. But after it loses its force, it starts falling. Right? Correct. But the key thing here, it falls head first. This is the idea. The structure around it is made in a way that regardless of initial orientation, it will always be head first. And this is what is used today in Unity. It has a unique capability to change its shape in space to ensure a repeatable safe re-entry. By rotating its wings and tail booms upward while in space, the vehicle's stability and rate of deceleration and descent is controlled by aerodynamic forces. This feathering concept proves that sometimes the most disruptive designs can emerge from the most humble of origins. Some of the most notable collaborations they have is with the likes of NASA, where most recently they announced that they will help train individuals to venture to the International Space Station. It also has a collaboration with Land Rover. If you haven't noticed, a Range Rover was towing out the new Virgin Galactic spaceship. A fleet of Land Rover vehicles currently provide valuable support for the Virgin Galactic team and astronauts. Land Rover and Virgin Galactic are also collaborating on a series of STEM programs designed to inspire the youth of today into engineering and technology careers. And what about the spacesuits? Under Armour. In 2019, Virgin Galactic announced a partnership with Under Armour for the fabrication of spacesuits for passengers and pilots of Unity. Under Armour will also create uniforms for employees working at the spaceport in America. The company realizes the answers to many of our challenges we face in sustaining life on our beautiful but fragile planet lie in making better use of space. Sending people to space has not only expanded our understanding of science, but taught us amazing things about human ingenuity, physiology, and psychology. Space exploration has helped us develop extremely important technologies, including ones that led to CAT scans, MRI, and LASIK surgeries, which helped save or make a lot of people's lives easier. And you can look at a list of a lot more, as they are really interesting. Also, I would love if you mentioned some of the ones you know in the comment section. I'm curious to see what you know about this topic. As a global community, we will grow and evolve only through continuing to explore the unknown. And I guess the ultimate expression of human desire is to push boundaries through space exploration. Despite the fact that millions of people would love to experience space, fewer than 600 have. It is this very fact that inspired the creation of Virgin Galactic. And I thought I'd end this video with a really relevant and relatable quote from Stephen Hawking in 2016, when he was introducing the Unity vehicle that still applies today despite of the large divide we see in the world. We are entering a new space age, and I hope this will help to create a new Unity. Space exploration has already been a great unifier. We seem able to cooperate between nations in space in a way we can only envy on Earth. 
Taking more and more passengers out into space will enable them, and us, to look both outwards and back, but with a fresh perspective in both directions. It will help bring new meaning to our place on Earth and to our responsibilities as its stewards. And it will help us to recognize our place in our future in the cosmos, which is where I believe our ultimate destiny lies. Hawking's message concluded with the name announcement. Please welcome Virgin Spaceship Unity.